Hello, this is the tutorial for the Salvington top. If you don't have the pattern already, the link is in the description. I'm making this out of a double muslin, double gauze, which is a first for me, so we're learning together today. Here I have my two back pieces. I've found my notch. I'm going to overlock in advance this time because this fabric's got that lovely embroidery on it, which makes overlocking afterwards a little bit tricky, I think, because it's a bit bumpy. So you can still see where my notches were. So I'm going to do the back opening. You don't have to have the back opening in this top. If you want to just do a very simple version, you can just leave it out and just sew straight along the back seam from top to bottom. I'm going to sew from the notch down. So I want to do that lovely opening. Little back tack, centimetre seam allowance. It's the same for all my patterns unless otherwise specified on the pattern. Back tack at the end. That's our seam. Now I'm going to press this open like so. So there's our centre back seam pressed open. That's the opening at the top. Like I said you don't have to do that but it's a nice detail. Now we're going to do the darts on the front. This is my front panel. This is the wrong side. You can see the notches there. I'm going to join those notches and that's my pin showing where the point of my dart is. So match those little snips up. Pop a pin in. You can draw your dart lines on with chalk if you prefer so you can get a good Neat match. There we go. We're going to sew from that wide edge to the point. Back tack to start. And then we're going to follow that trajectory of the pins coming off where that pin was for the point of the dart. Don't back tack at the end of darts. We just kind of come off naturally. There we go. Tapers off at the end. There's my dart. You can see how it tapers off there. We've got one this side as well. Obviously do both, one on each side. Angle your dart downwards. And we're going to press that gently over a ham. And there we are, neatly pressed. So now we're going to do the shoulders. Incidentally, you can see I put a stay stitch around the neckline of this fabric because it's quite stretchy. I've put a big stitch all the way around the neckline to just keep it the same shape. Matching my front and backs, right sides together. I'm going to stitch a centimetre from the shoulder seam. Back tack. Stitch a centimetre. Back tack. And then do the same for the other shoulder. So there we are, there's our two shoulder seams. We're going to press these open and overlock them. Now you can see, definitely better to overlock this fabric before we stitch it. A bit wibbly wobbly. Nicely pressed. So now we're going to do the facing around the neck. I haven't interfaced this facing because they don't make interfacing this colour and because it's got the little holes in, I didn't want the white or the black to show through so I've left it so it's nice and soft which kind of feels right with this fabric anyway as it's got that lovely soft springy quality. So laying my fronts and my backs right side together, I'm going to pin those at the shoulder and stitch a centimetre. Back tack, centimetre seam allowance, stitch across. Do the same for the other one, there we go. I'm going to press it open. And I'm going to overlock around the outside edge once I've pressed that seam open. There we go. You can see where I've overlocked it and pressed it. That's my facing.
Next I'm going to make a rouleau loop. You can see I've cut a bias piece of fabric, that's my selvage, so it's at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to cut this little selvage bit off because this fabric, it's a double gauze and so look, you can see it's just two layers of fabric stitched together with a very fine thread. So I'm going to snip these and just use the one layer of fabric because uh, the thicker the fabric, the harder it is to make a rouleau loop and they end up a bit thick and chunky. So we only need a little fine loop for this. So that's enough. I don't need very much of this. It's only for one little loop. So you can see it's got some stretch in it. I'm going to stitch about three mils from the fold. Pick out all those little bits of thread. Lining my machine up. There we go, three millimetres from the fold. Now I've got my trusty loop turner. That's what it looks like. I'm going to trim the seam allowance down to the same width as the seam I've sewn. And then I'm going to slip my turner up through the middle and sort of hook it, hook the fabric onto it. But you just ends up inside the loop and then you just roll the fabric over the top so that that seam allowance ends up on the inside. One nice little loop. That's plenty for our button loop. So now it's time to attach it to our bodice. Here we are, you can see I've, mat I've drawn the seam allowance on with some wax. There's my button, there's my loop. Now I'm gonna use that seam allowance marking to butt the rouleau against so it, I know it's right at the top and then I'm going to place my button on that wax line there and fold the loop over the top so that I know that loop will be big enough for that button. You can pull it quite tight because it's got quite a bit of stretch in as it's cut on the bias. So I'm putting two pins in. If you don't like sewing over pins, just pop a tack in it. Now I'm going to sew down that line that I drew for the seam allowance. I'm using a very small stitch and I'm going to back tack over it and go forward again to secure it on. There you go, trim the ends away. Let's check that button will go through there. A bit fiddly when it's so tiny. So it'll stretch out a bit. There we go. Perfect. So I know that will be just perfect when I follow the seam allowance. So now we're going to pop this facing on, pin it all round. Match up the shoulders. Now, where you are going to start sewing from is from the other side, not the facing side, but the side of the blouse. And you can see where that stitching stops, you are going to start your next stitch line. So, find that place, pop your needle in exactly where it finished. Sewing the centre back seam, back tack, one centimetre seam allowance. Oh, little back tack. I'm going to just do one or two stitches across, cutting the corner off because this fabric is quite bulky and I want a nice corner. It will come out much nicer if you just put a stitch that goes across it. Okay, so we're going to do some trimming and clipping now. But first, look, you can see where I started and stopped that stitching. So it joins up. Trim that little straggler. And now we're going to cut the corners off and do some clipping around the neckline. You can see there where I cut that corner off with the stitching. So it will turn through when I pull that loop because it's quite bulky in there with the loop as well. Nice little loop there. And then we just need to clip these curves. I clip them every sort of two and a half centimetres or so. 
and trim these little bits off too, just reducing the bulk. Clip and trim all the way around, turn your other corner out and then we're going to edge stitch to hold that seam allowance towards, there we go, towards the facing. So you pull it towards the facing and you stitch right on the edge. Press it first if it makes you feel a bit uh, more confident about getting it on the edge. So a little back tack, you won't be able to go all the way around your corners because it gets a bit too fiddly in there but just go up as high as you can, back tack, come off and then start again as near to the corner as you can making sure that seam allowance is pulled underneath towards the facing. There we are, so that's it stitched. Now before I press it I'm just going to stitch up this little bit at the back of the bottom of the facings, at the bottom of our little opening. It's only about a centimetre but there's a little bit of excess there so join them up, start stitching from where the stitching stops again and just stitch that last centimetre. There we go, look, press that open and it just neatens up the end. So I'm going to press that all around. That makes the neckline lovely and crisp having that stitch on the inside. And that's what my back opening looks like with its little loop. Trim up those little straggly bits. Fabulous. Now I'm going to top stitch my neckline, but you don't have to, it's a design choice. But I'm going to stitch mine three centimetres away from the edge. I'm going to start by just cutting right across the bottom of my opening. And you can see I've got my trusty tape measure so that I know exactly when I get to three centimetres. Nice pivot. And then I can check that's three. It's easy to see on my base plate that way round, but I will need my tape measure when I get to the edge again because the measurements don't go that way. You can draw it on with some chalk or wax or something if you prefer that. I'm quite happy to just use my tape measure end and then pivot again and then you can use your base plate for this bit. There we go, it just needs a press again. Nice neat top stitching. I think that looks very smart. So we're going to do the side seams, right sides together, match the sides up, make sure that dart is in line, pop some pins in and we're going to stitch it and overlock it but as you can see I overlocked it before again because it was definitely very wibbly wobbly on my machine using this fabric to overlock after the event so there we go much neater, open that up, give it a press looking nice. So I'm going to pop my button on now. Marry those edges up. I put my needle in the end of that loop so that I know exactly where my button needs to go or where I need to put the stitches for the button. So secure my thread. Little stabilising stitch and then I grab my button and pop it on to that corner. A few stitches through, a securing stitch at the back, thread it through, wind it round a couple of times, thread it through again and we're done. There you go, button done. You can do it on your machine but I much prefer a bit of hand so really, especially when it's just the one little button. So now we're going to do the sleeves. These are nice little cap sleeves. Make sure you've got a pair, right sides together. You can tell the front and the back, two notches at the back, one notch at the front. One centimetre seam allowance, back tack, and then back tack again, overlock the edges, 
press them open. There we go, nice quick little seam there. Turn them the right way. I'm going to overlock the hems and turn them up because again this fabric's quite thick. So I'm just turning up a centimetre and stitching. You could always put some binding along it or turn and turn if you prefer that, if your fabric's a bit thinner. Just doing a really simple turn and stitch on this one. Set both sleeves are stitched, pick all the bits off, give them a nice press. There we are, two sleeves ready to go. Again, do double check you've got a pair, a left and a right. There we go. Okay, so now we find out whether you've done a pair or not. Two notches, one notch at the front. Find your underarm seam, there's two notches and there's one notch. So I'm going to pin these right sides together under the arm. And I know that's the front of my sleeve because they've both got one notch. So if I put my first pin in, matching those seams, then I'm going to just turn it through and work from the other side, just because I find it easier to work from inside the garment for a sleeve. There we go. And then I'm going to find the balance mark for the top. There it is. Match that up with the seam at the shoulder. Pop a pin in there. And then I just pin from under the arm around. There you go, double notch, double notch. If it makes you feel more comfortable with dealing with the ease in the sleeve head, you could always tack it first rather than just pin. I'm going to stitch from the inside of my sleeve one centimetre. I start from the underarm seam and go all the way around one centimetre seam allowance easing that sleeve head into the bodice. There we go, that's stitched in. Just needs an overlock now or a zigzag to neaten it up. There we go, all neat. So there we go, turn it through. Repeat for the other side obviously. Give it a little press or a steam. Lovely. So next it's just the hem to do and then we're finished. So again I've overlocked it and I'm just going to turn it because it's quite a thick fabric and stitch along the overlocking. So I've turned it up a centimetre and I'm just going to go for it. So all the way around. You could turn and turn or you could again pop some binding on it whatever you think looks most smart and suits your fabric. There we go, just needs a press. And then we're all done. Show you the back detail again. Little cap sleeve, job done. Enjoy.